All right, we're going to pray, then we will get into the lesson. I will write on the board the points of the lesson for those of you taking notes, and we'll get through this. I will give you a pen. After we pray, wherever my pens, they're there. Okay. Shut your mouths. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We are so thankful for giving us life, giving us good times that we can have. Lord, even in the hardest times, there's always something that we can be thankful for. And Lord, for that, we do thank you. God, I pray that you would be with our lesson tonight. As we look into your word, I pray that you would give us wisdom and help us to know you better through reading and hearing and learning about your word. Help us to do what's right because of that. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Where did I put my towel? Okay, say goodbye to the Camp Price. Goodbye, goodbye Camp Price. All right. That wasn't at you. Devin didn't even catch it. Okay. Tonight, tonight we're going to get into what we didn't get into last night, last Wednesday. Really, really quiet. I can't. I just can't do it with the chair in front of me. Um, <laughs> Now, uh, the last couple of, of words in the big Bible word series, what were you pointing at? Um, no, no, that's all right. That would be creepy. Um, like I'm, I'm sitting here, you're holding it, and I'm looking you in the face going, this is weird. Um, the last couple of words in the big Bible words. Okay, we've been through a ton. We've been through salvation and justification and sanctification. Well, we haven't been through sanctification. Um, we've been through a lot of big, like, Asian words in the Bible. And Asian, A-T-I-O-N, not Asian. I'm not talking about Chinese people here. Come on. Get with the program. Asian. Words that end with A-T-I-O-N. Come on, people. Okay. I want to learn something. Shut it! It's enough. Hey, look at me. It's enough. Stop. No. Stop. 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 Let's start over with you quiet and me making sense. Um, so the last couple of words are not things you hear all the time. I mean, if you, if you come to church any amount at all, you've heard somebody talk about justification. You've heard somebody say the word salvation. Okay? Um, yes, you have. You've heard me say it. Now, but these last couple of words, I mean, even our pastor doesn't get into them until he like reads a passage that has the word in it. People just don't focus on these things. But again, the significance of all these words is these are things that happen at salvation. All of this stuff happens to you at salvation. You're saved. You're justified. You're declared to be righteous. Remember, that's what justified means. And then you're, you've uh, had remission of your sins. That means to take away. Um, you've been atoned for. That means your sins have been covered over. You remember all of these? If you don't, well, get on YouTube and watch the videos. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about a word called imputation. Now, this is really weird. But, no, impute. Uh, the root word is impute, okay? To impute means to place on one's account. Okay, let me write that for you. No, sir, I do not. Okay, now, this is sort of a banking term, okay? Uh, who's got a bank account? Share it with your parents. No. <laughs> no? Okay. Um, this, is, this is a banking term, okay? This is if I want to take money and put it in your account. Okay, I can... So basically, to impute is for... The idea with money would be for me to take money from my account and put it into your account. Okay? Stop talking. So, 
It's to place on one's account. What are we talking about with this? This is not money when we're talking about the Bible. This is not money when we're talking about Jesus. What we're talking about is righteousness. Remember, the Bible tells us there is none righteous. None of us are righteous. No, not one. The Bible says, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We cannot be righteous on our own. We have moments of greatness, I guess. Sometimes we go a whole day without doing anything wrong. Maybe some of you wonderful people have gone a whole week without doing anything wrong. Probably not. Um, <laughs> some of you probably say bad things about people in your sleep. Okay, so, um, uh, so we don't have, check it out, our bank account, our, our proverbial bank account, as far as righteousness is concerned, we don't have anything in it. Okay? We are not righteous. We cannot obtain righteousness on our own. And so for us to have righteousness in our account, it has to be put in our account by someone else. Okay. Um, okay, who are the people with bank accounts? Show me again. Um, how much money do you have in your bank account right now? Right now. No? Okay, Hannah. $400. $400. $63,000. $63,000? Okay, who, who's got a million in your bank account right now? Honestly, be honest. Seriously? Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, none of us have a million dollars. So, okay, check it out. None of us are sitting on a stack of cash that equals a million dollars, right? So if you were to get a million dollars, you would have to be given that money by someone who has more than a million dollars. You with me? You follow me, heads up and down if you do. This is, this is the universal sign for yes. This is no. Okay, yes, you're with me. So if you do not have a million dollars in order for you to get there, you have to be, get, have that money put in your account by someone who does have it, right? We do not have righteousness on our own. In order for us to be righteous in God's sight, that's got to be put on our account. That's what happens at salvation. When you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, forgive your sins, and wash you from your sins. That's Jesus' righteousness being put into your account. That's like Bill Gates walking up, writing a check, and going, how much you want it to say? Give me a blank check. No, he's like, just pick a number, dude. I'll, however many zeros you want. I'll put a number in front of it. I 20 zeros? All right, bam, that happens. You just Okay, Bill Gates could do that. I could write you a check that looked like that. <laughs> don't try and, don't try and cash it. <laughs> I could. Um, <laughs> now, here's the thing. To, for Jesus to impute His righteousness to us. I'm going to give you a couple of Bible verses. Um, Romans 4.11. And it's talking about Abraham. It says, He became the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, the right, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. That's put on their account. He was the father of all, uh, all that believe. That's what the Old Testament says about him. Um, Romans 4, 21-24. Abraham, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. God's righteousness put on his account. Uh, Romans 5, 13. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Galatians 3, 6. Even Abraham believed God... And it was accounted, that means imputed, to him for righteousness. That he believed God, and that was imputed as righteousness to Abraham's account. Okay, so here's the deal. Faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior is what takes that righteousness from God's account and places it into your account. Does that make sense? That's as simple as I can think to put it. And it's a little over simple, but I, just, I want you to get it. At the moment you trust Christ as Savior, instantly, Jesus' righteousness is imputed to you. Placed in your account. Okay? Now, probably one of the most confusing and one of the coolest words, other than justification, that's probably one of my favorites, but um, is our next word. And that is sanctification. What? Woohoo, Yeah. Sanctification. 
S A N C T I F I C A T I O N. I'm positive that's right. Question my spell. I can't spell. It's amazing, I know. Now, sanctification, you can talk about sanctification in three different ways, in, or three different time periods, okay? And we'll get into that in just a second. Sanctification uh, is to be set apart, and really specifically for the believer, it means to be set apart for a special service, okay? Uh, the Bible talks about sanctifying Things and sanctifying people. Okay, and here's, here's what that means. In the Old Testament, they would sanctify the articles of the temple to be used just for the worship of God. Okay, so they would have all kinds of different things that were, that were in the temple, but certain of those things were sanctified. They were set apart. These are only to be used for the sacrifices or for the, some other version of worship of God. Okay, so... Um, like those those plates over there you can use but this this sensor right here is only to be used for the sacrifices that makes sense it was set apart from everything else now that's that's in an example of a thing being sanctified what it means for us is that we are set apart we are placed apart from other things other people because there is a difference. Okay? Um, we're sanctified from the world. Now, let me, let me explain what I mean. When, when we accept Christ as Savior, okay, everyone who accepts Christ as Savior instantly becomes different from those that have not. It's not, it's not visible on the outside. It's a change on the inside. So, what it should do is create different desires. Now, let me explain. There's, there's three different types or time periods that we talk about salvation. The first is past sanctification. This is what happens the moment you accept Christ as Savior. Jesus sets you apart. You are a special uh, item for Him to use and to love and to, to bless. Where Because... You've been adopted as part of His family. Uh, before you were saved, you're not part of God's family. Does that make sense? After you're saved, you're in His family. Now, the, the family illustration is this. I love you guys. I would do a lot of stuff for you. But I'm not going to stick you in my van, take you home, and tuck you into bed, and you know, you're not my child. Right? Does that make sense? I have two children... Tonight, when we're done, I will buckle them in their car seats. I will drive home and put them in their beds. Yeah. Not for me. You can draw your own conclusion. Um, so, I will put them in their car seats. We will take them home, read them a story, maybe sing a song with them, pray, and they will go to sleep eventually. 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 <laughs> You know, I have to hit him in the head with a two-by-four or something. I don't know. Knock him out. Um, I don't really do that, oh, just in case you're wondering. I save the two-by-four for you guys. Uh, you're welcome! Can we go out back? That, that is the back. Now, because they are mine, I have an obligation to them. It's my job because they're three years old and five years old. They can't get a job. Okay? <laughs> They're not flipping burgers at McDonald's. They're not working at a grocery store somewhere. They're not pushing parts across the counter at AutoZone over here. You understand? Jonah just doesn't know how to work on cars yet. So I have to pay the bills. I have to put food on the table. That's my job. <laughs> she takes the food that I get the money for and makes it taste good is what she does. <laughs> because I don't do a good job at that. Um, I, I cook. I microwave some mean popcorn, though, just in case you were wondering. Um, because they're my family, I love them special, and I take care of them. 
you guys, I love, but it's not my job to feed you. Sometimes I feed you. Like, like here. Dude, there's a big bag of, you already had it. Uh, now, do you, do you see the difference? Okay, I know y'all are like, but what about? Uh, you see the difference, right? You're not mine. They are. Here's the thing. Here's, here's the other thing. Uh, we were in the mall the other day. And in the mall, you get to see all kinds of people. <laughs> and these, some of these people have children. And some of their children are not like my children. Uh, they, they, do not, they do not behave like my children. They do not act like my children in many ways at all. Here's the reason. When my kids, you know, once or twice, my kids have started to act kind of that way, our trip to the mall instantly ended. Because those children were scooped up and taken to the van. Done. Okay, so we're not going to be the ones in the mall with the screaming ah, wild Indian children because we'll be in the van with the screaming wild Indians, not in the mall. Um, so, so sometimes having them as part of my family means I take care of them. Sometimes it means... Uh, Discipline them, right? So, um, all right. Listen, before you were you accepted Christ as your Savior, you were not part of God's family. Now, focus for a second. Now, if you've accepted Christ as Savior, you're part of His family, and He takes care of His own. That means. That means that. Everything that's, that's His, His righteousness, is yours. And that means He cares for you like part of the family. He sets you apart from everyone who's not part of the family. My children are set apart from everybody else in this church because they go home with me. That's, that's a line of demarcation there, right? We get in the van and we separate from everybody. We're set apart. That's a special place. It's a special group. They're set apart. And in salvation, we are saved and we are set apart as part of His family. At, at, uh, this author says, at new birth, every believer is eternally sanctified in Christ. He's bought from the power of the devil and put into the family of God. Okay, that's past sanctification. Okay, I'm going to... Write these down. So sanctification is in three parts. The first is past. Okay? And that is salvation. All right? The second... Can anybody see where this is going? Okay? The second is present. There's a present where? Got to wait till Christmas. Um, the second is present. That's right now. All right? Present sanctification is... Now, let me read you the definition here. Present sanctification is the process by which the Holy Spirit gradually changes the believer's life to give him victory over sin. Okay, that's a gradual change in your life to make you look more like Jesus looks. To make you act more like Jesus acts. Behave the way Jesus would behave if He were given the same choice as you were. Okay, so that's present sanctification. What that is is discipleship or a Christian walk. Okay? I'm going to put discipleship right here. That's what we're trying to obtain in our SWAT groups. All right? That's what we're trying to do in having you read the Bible. And hopefully you'll grow and become more like Him. That's growing in Christ. We want... Okay, if you're a Christian, that means... A Christ-like one. We are supposed to be like Christ is. That, is, that means when He's presented with a, a choice to make, he, Christ is going to make the right choice, the righteous choice, the not sinful choice, right? That's God. So that's supposed to be our goal. We need to model ourselves after Him. That's what being a Christian is. And growing in Christ means making our decisions look like the decision Jesus would make. 
Okay? So that's present discipleship. That's growing in Christ. Uh, real quick, let me give you the, the verses for past and present. Past. Past sanctification unto the church of God at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Jesus Christ, called to be saints. At the moment of salvation, you are placed in the family of God. You are a saint. That's what the Bible calls you. You're salva- you've obtained salvation. You're in God's family. You're sanctified. You're set apart. Now, present, growing in Christ, but now being made free from sin and become servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end of everlasting life. You, after you're saved, you need to show the works in your life are more and more like Christ every day. Okay? Now, that's past sanctification to salvation. Present sanctification, that's discipleship or growing in Christ. Anybody know what the next one's going to be? Woo! Good job. Five and a half gold stars, Justin. Okay, future sanctification. Future sanctification. What, is it, what does it mean that in the future we're going to be set apart? Well, ultimately, that's when believers, Christians on earth, are taken to heaven. Okay, that's the ultimate set apart. When your life on earth is over, there's only two places that you can end up. Okay, there's heaven, which is eternal reward, and hell, which is eternal punishment. That's the ultimate setting apart. Right? Believers go to heaven. Everyone else who rejects Christ does not. That, so future sanctification is just eternal life. Sometimes. So, future sanctification is the perfection of the believer in resurrection. At Christ's coming, every believer will receive a new body and will have no sin. You know, there is no sin in heaven. When God takes the believers to heaven, you will get exactly what you were intended to have in the first place. Think back real quick, okay? I'm I'm about to explain. Just chill. At creation, God created the heaven, the earth, the birds, the fish, the land animals, and finally, on day six, He created human beings. He created man and woman. He didn't. He saved the best for last. Now, check it out. Hold on. When when God created mankind, He created them absolutely perfect. Remember? He put them in the Garden of Eden and all they had, all that was there was them for them to enjoy. They had all kinds of fruits of the field and trees and everything except for the tree in the middle of the Garden of Eden. God said, don't touch it. Don't even look at it. Don't think about it. Just don't go near it. And everything was perfect until they messed that up, right? Okay, so they made they made the choice and that's but how did God intend for human life to be? He intended for us to be perfect and in fellowship with him. What that means is, that's going to be restored when we get to heaven. That's when the perfection will finally be attained for everyone. uh, For everyone that trusts Christ as Savior. So that's what God wants for us, and that's what the ultimate of sanctification is. In the future, when your life on earth is over, Christians will go to heaven and be with God, and that is the ultimate setting apart. Okay? Because... We're set apart from everyone who has not trusted Christ as Savior. Everybody understand that so far? Okay, sanctification is a big word, but it just means that God has given us a special place. Christians, believers, are set apart into God's family, and that means, here's the other part, we need to serve Him. We need to... Yeah, it comes... There are, there are benefits to being... In God's family. He saves us from our sin. He sustains us and He takes care of us. And we, it also comes with responsibility. Um, and how many of you have chores? Oh, I do. No, I have Think, yeah. Oh, man, I hate working. Um, but, I mean, come on. Really, is it that bad? Um, you, you, got your, you got your lawnmowers fixed all up. I mean, you're starting your own business. Now, um, now you're like me, though. I didn't get paid for my chores. I, I did my chores because it was either that or sleep in the backyard. Um, so, yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> allowance? I, I didn't. I didn't ever get any of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so being part of my family, I had the benefit of having a room to sleep in, having a bed, but I also had responsibilities. As a child of God, we have the benefits that come with being saved, but we also have the responsibility of the commandments in the Bible, Matthew 28, the Great Commission, go and tell others about what God has done for you, about the gift of God, which is eternal life. We are supposed to be that, that example, that, um, that witness to other people, so that as many people as possible are sanctified with us when life on earth is over. It's probably... Yeah, yeah, checking it off. It's an abacus up in the sky. Um, so, imputation. That means Jesus' righteousness placed on our account. Sanctification means at the moment of salvation, we are set apart for service to God. We are, we are saved, we grow in Christ, and we have an eternal life of reward in heaven with Him. Okay? Everybody bow your heads and close your eyes. We're going to pray real quick. Please, heads down, eyes closed. I don't want to see your faces. Um, any of you, and I, I mean this, I don't know that uh, I've stressed this enough in weeks past. If you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, this stuff that we've been talking about doesn't apply to you. And I would love for it to. If you've never asked Him to come into your heart, forgive your sins, be your Savior, and give you a home in heaven when you die. I would love to show you how the Bible promises that you can know you're going to heaven. So, if you've never done that, would you, would you please, when the craziness is going on, after we pray, say amen, and dismiss, would you come talk to me so we can settle that tonight? Lord, thank you so much for the promises from your word the, that we can know for sure we're going to heaven. God, I pray that as we leave this place, that if there's anybody here that doesn't know you as their Savior, that they would uh, get that taken care of in their heart tonight. Lord, uh, help us to leave here and live like we are victorious because you have given us the victory. Help us to do what's right in every situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.